In this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate ChatGPT within Visual Studio Code and show you how it can help you write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I can't believe it will even write the code to connect to an API that will pull live cryptocurrency data from the net. So let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, so to get started, go ahead, open up Visual Studio Code, click over here on the extensions, and then type up here, ChatGPT4, and it's gonna give you a bunch of different uh, extensions that you can use. Now, there's even way more if you just type in ChatGPT itself, tons of them. And so I typed in ChatGPT4 and I saw this one right here and I used it and it seems to work quite well. Now, the output is so fast, it kind of seems like it's using 3.5 under the hood. However, it still worked for my intentions. So make sure you install this. And this one requires no session key or open AI key required. So that's also another reason I used it. That way you don't have to use an API key. Um, I'm going to show you the HTML real quick in the CSS and the project. So I have some initial HTML I already created and also some SAS that I created as well. Now the actual result doesn't look that great if I show you. And we're going to ask our chat GPT extension to help us out with it. First of all, it needs a better font. This is terrible. This is terrible. It's not aligned very well let's do some fixing up in that regard real quickly. So all we have to do is we're going to click on, after you install that, you're gonna see a new tab here called GPT-4. And we're gonna go ahead and ask it to help fix and import a font called Nunito. So right up here, I'm going to type in, the Nunito font is not loading, and can you import that font from Google Fonts for me? All right, let's go ahead and ask Codebase now it's gonna say this feature requires you to first index your code base, please select your project folder. Hit okay. And we're gonna go ahead and just select the folder that it chose, indexing complete, hit ask code base again. And it's gonna tell us right over here that it can't actually perform out actions outside of the platform. However, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna give us the relevant HTML and the CSS. So all we have to do is just take this. Now, if we click it once, it's just gonna copy it to the clipboard. Otherwise, we can select a specific line because I already have the head tags and I can revert back to my files here. Let's double click on these and get them loaded up. Let's go ahead and then paste this right where it needs to go. And then we take a look at our result and we have a much better font already. All right, so that's great. Another thing, this delete button um, and the trash icon, they don't really look like they're centered aligned very well. Maybe you're not very good with Flexbox and you're not sure how to align things vertically. All right, so all you have to do is go back. We're going to go to our extension over here on the side and I'm gonna ask it that this following prompt right here. So can you make it so that the span and SVG elements are vertically centered as Flexbox children. All right, let's go ahead and ask the code base. Here we go, align item center. Very, very easy, nothing too impressive at this point in time. However, we're just gonna go over here and we're going to make sure that we place this in the right section. I believe we place it right here in this Flexbox area, align center and much better center aligned. Okay, so now at this point, let's go ahead and ask it to actually write some JavaScript, all right? So the, the following prompt that we're going to issue is, with the following HTML structure, write the JavaScript that will do the following. Once a user clicks on the element, with the class of delete, which is in the HTML, it will remove the card in which it resides and it will fade out and shrink to zero for 0 0.3 seconds. And here is the code. So in order for us to copy the code, we'll just go ahead and specify just the HTML right here. I'm gonna come back here to the end as I've just copied it and we will paste it right there, ask code base. And let's get us back over here. And here it goes. 
So now it's starting to print all this out. Now for some reason, sometimes it doesn't get added into actual code blocks, like format, like into format style over here, but that's fine. All we have to do is just copy a couple of these and it looks like it's, it doesn't have the editor for me to copy. Let's just copy this. This is just JavaScript that we can add down here in script tags. All right, and let's save it and let's see if it actually works. Look at that. It works right out of the box. Very, very nice. Okay, so let's take it a step further. Let's say for instance, we want to issue the following prompt. All right. Utilizing the same HTML structure I previously pasted, write the JavaScript that will connect to a publicly available crypto API. Then in the paragraph element of each card, display the name and current price of the top three cryptocurrencies. And if you don't have access to the top three, choose any. Provide me with the updated HTML and JavaScript. Okay, now sometimes this happens where it doesn't finish the actual prompt and you can see it clearly didn't finish this one. Please finish the JavaScript from the previous prompt. Ask that. Okay, there we go. So now we're gonna copy this and we're just gonna paste this over here. And what would be really cool if it could actually modify the code yourself so you don't have to manually do it because we're so lazy these days. We're gonna copy this. I'm gonna paste it down beneath our previous JavaScript and save it. And we're gonna see if it works. I have no clue if it's gonna work. <laughs> oh, look at that. So it kind of worked except it broke the layout. I wanted them to use this selector for that specifically. So let's ask it to fix that. Please revise the HTML to remove the new span element you added and instead display the cryptocurrency name and price in the existing paragraph element of each list item. So I can't be more explicit than that. We'll see how it does. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this once again and we'll paste, let's save it. and it's completely not working. This is not displaying the correct crypto. All right, let's copy and give it another shot. Looks like this time it might actually work. And there we go. Finally, look at that. So we have Bitcoin currently at 28,254. All right, so let's just hit delete. These all still work. And that is it, people. Uh, as you can see, you clearly can just have a conversation like you would, normally would in the chat GPT, uh, normal open AI website, but you can do it now in Visual Studio Code and you can ask it to help you with your code essentially. And this is gonna be great for beginners or intermediate or advanced because everybody always has to search and this is just going to make your life that much easier. So hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, like, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.